Hallelujah. Understanding and maximizing the seasons of life. The Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, message Bible says, there is an opportune time to do things. There is an opportune time to do things. A time for everything on earth. There is an opportune time to do things. There's a time to learn to read. There's a time to learn to drive. There's a time to learn to run. There's a time to learn to save. There's an opportune time to do things. Hallelujah. The Bible in Psalm 90, verse 12, CV says, Teach us to use wisely all the time we have. Tell somebody you don't have all the time. Nobody lives forever. You don't have all the time. So your prayer this morning is, Lord, teach me to use wisely, to make the best use of the time that I have. Amen. Teach me to make the best use of the time that I have. I, I said before, and I'm going to say it again, Abraham Lincoln said, good things might come to those who wait, but only the things that have been left over by those who hustle. Good things might come to those who wait, but only the things left over by the people who work hard, by the people who know where they are going, by the people who are committed to their dreams, by the people who make the most of their time, by the people who make the most of their energy and resources. Hallelujah. Time is a seed. Tell somebody time is a seed. Tell them time is a seed. How you choose to sow it will determine the harvest of your life. Time is a seed. How you choose to sow it will determine the harvest of your life. What you want in life is a harvest. But what God has given you is a time seed. Amen. You need to train seven years to become a doctor. Yeah. You don't have to train seven years to become a carpenter. Maybe three years. Maybe four years. But to become a doctor, after going to secondary school for six years, you need to train in the universities for seven years. Time is a seed. Tell someone time is a seed. So, we looked at learning years. And we said in your learning years, there are a few things you should learn. I want to recap in two minutes. We said this stage of your life from 20 to 30 is the most essential part of your life. Because it's foundational. Amen. We said it is a season of discoveries. It is that part you should discover your passion, your potentials, what you are called to do. At least at a minimal level. You should have an understanding of who you are, what you want to do with the rest of your life. We said education. To understand your potential. Then it is a time of education, maturation, and preparation. Tell somebody preparation. Your learning year is a time of preparation. It's a time of education. And then we said it is a time to develop your mission statement and your governing values. Your mission statement speaks about the purpose of your life. For me, it's PWA. Preach the gospel, walk with, and assist the next generation. That's why I live. Preach the gospel, walk with, and assist the next generation. If it doesn't fall into that, I'm thinking twice. Every one of us should be able to articulate our life and say, this is why I assist. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? It is a time to find a mentor. It is always easier to build when you have a pattern. A mentor gives you the opportunity to see a version of your life. It teaches you the principles that can help you achieve your goals faster. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it is time to, dis- to develop skills, winning skills, relationship skills, saving skills. Hallelujah. Amen. So this morning, I want to speak about the any years. Can you say any years? Any years. The Bible in Numbers chapter 4 verse 23 NLT says, Count all the men between the ages of 30 and 50 who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. In your learning years, we looked at the men who are able to go to war between the ages of 20 to 30. But these men are able to serve in the tabernacle. This is your any years. Hallelujah. And this morning I want to share with you quickly seven things you should be able to do in your any years. Amen. I know that many of us are not in that bracket, but these are things you should be able to focus on. That's why you must make the best use of your learning years. Because if you waste your learning years, even in your any years, you are still learning. Amen. Something about time is time does not wait for anybody. Today, we all have 24 hours. Some of us are going to spend 12 hours watching something on our phone. Somebody is going to use that 12 hours to write a book and put it on Amazon. And that book will still be selling 50 years from now. Tell somebody, watch your steps. Use your head. These are desperate times. Number one. Your any year is a peak season for success and achievement. This is when you strive to become everything you are capable of becoming. This is when you settle in in the fulfillment of your life, work, and career. If God is calling you to ministry, this is a time to focus on ministry. If you are an entrepreneur, this is a time to start the business and grow it. It is a season for success and achievement, settling in in fulfilling life's work or career. This is time to write down the things you want to do and commit to them and pay the price. Hallelujah. Number two, the second thing you should do in your any years. This is the season. This season is one of providing supply for the winter season of life. When you cannot work as much as you did before. You know, now you are young. There's virtually nothing you cannot do. But the time is coming. You are going to be old. You're going to be older. You're going to be probably 75, 80, 90. And you won't be able to go around and run everywhere. And this season of your life is when you prepare for that season. Unfortunately, many people live their life not thinking about that season. And they suddenly come to the, towards the end of their life and they are helpless. But if they are prepared for that stage, they can buy help. Hallelujah. You know, let, let me say this for those of us who are young. Life is always in seasons. Nobody earns money all the time. Nobody makes steady progress all the time. You, you know, Genesis chapter 41. Let's go to Genesis 41. Genesis 41, give me from verse 25. I want to read 25 to 27 and then 33 to 36. This is the story of Joseph and, and Pharaoh. But why am I sharing this story with you this morning? Many times that's the story of our life. 
everybody comes to seven years of surplus. And without consciously knowing it, you can sleep from seven years of surplus to another seven years of famine. If you don't make room for yourself in the years of surplus, you suffer in the years of famine. Are you with me this morning? Are you listening to me this morning? Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh are one. He had two dreams. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. 26. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seven thin and ugly cows, which after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. I've seen these two years in my life. There was a time when everything just was working. Pam, pam, pam. Even small, small things I do could bring in a lot of money. And we could do a little investment here and there today that has become something bigger. We didn't know there was going to be a time when we would not have incomes like that. When our children went to the university, the year they entered the university, we lost every source of income until they finished. So everybody, don't, you don't have every, you don't make money every day. You don't have opportunity for growth every day. You must make the most of the opportunities you have today. So that the days things are not as fast as you want them to be, you can still survive and thrive. Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a designing and wise man. You need to be designing in your early years. It is not every big money that comes to your life that you blow. Otherwise, you'll be spending tomorrow's resources today. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select designing and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. 34. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the product of the land of Egypt for the seven years, plentiful years. You will know what that means. One-fifth is 20%. See, when you suspect that you are in in a boom, a season when God is blessing everything you do, set aside something and do it consistently. Amen. That's what Egypt did. That's how they could overpower the season of famine. When you are in prosperity season, don't eat with all your mouth. And let them gather all the food of the good years that are coming. And store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh. And let them keep food in the cities. 36. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land. For the seven years of famine. Which shall be in the land of Egypt. That the land may not perish during famine. What has our leaders done in Nigeria? In the years of boom. Everything was stolen. We have borrowed things that you will need to pay back. Because everybody thought Nigeria was rich. So even when Nigeria became very broke, people were still living like we had everything. It's okay if it's happening to Nigeria. But don't let it happen to you. Amen. Are you angry with me? Number three. It is a phase of life when you make the decisions that can completely alter and change the pace and the flow of your entire life. Your any season is when you have to make serious decisions. Where to live. Who to marry. Where to walk. Where to worship. Very important decisions. And you will need to make them and consolidate those decisions for the rest of your life. And the time to lay the foundation for all of these big, big decisions is your learning years. 
Every child, 20 to 30, should learn about money. Everything you need to know about money and investment. Everything you need to know about relationship. Everything you need to know about God. If you don't, it is too late. Because the people who have learned those things will leverage your life for the rest of your life. They'll make you work for them. They will engage your strength. Number four. This is a season of building your investment arc. Because whatever you don't invest turns the risk of being consumed frivolously. You know, this is, if you are not careful, this is a time when everybody is competing with everybody. I, I used to be very close to a friend of mine. One day he told me, he said, he said if you see me riding a car, he said, I can buy 20 of it. So one day I saw him riding a Land Cruiser, Prado. And my head goes, times 20. But many of us are not that careful. We look at that man and say, ah, he's driving a Prado. And then you clear out all of your savings. Everything you have worked for because you want to buy a Prado. That man is not driving all of his life. But the other person is driving everything is to be and will be. Money has wings. It can fly away. And so what you need to do is to put aside part of what you are earning. Now let me tell you how to come to investment. If you are a salary earner, you put aside a part of your income. What you put aside is called savings. Are you listening to me? If you spend everything you get, you are not safe. And you are not wise. Many of us spend everything we get, we say, because it's not enough. If you spend everything you get, you are not wise and you are not safe. And if you don't do investment, you will spend everything. Because you have access to it. And so what you need to do is save something. What you save is what you invest. In fact, let me say it this way. If you put aside a part of your income regularly, and one day you want to go to business, what you save becomes your capital. When you use your capital to do business, you make money. Part of your profit, you save, it becomes your investment. Investment is making your money work for you while you don't necessarily have to be there. So whether you are awake or you are asleep, you are making money when you do investment. But many of us spend all our life working for money. If money does not work for you, you will never be financially free. Am I making sense? You are not strong enough to work all your life for money. When you are strong, you save money and make that money continue to work for you when you are no longer strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Number four. This is a season of building your investment arc. Because why? Whatever you don't invest stands the risk of being consumed frivolously. That's when you buy iPhones 14. You don't need it. You know. Maybe you need it. But some people, when they have iPhone 14, they can actually buy a truckload of it. But some people have cleared out even the money they were next year to buy it today. So in your early years, you need to learn to delay gratification. It's not everything you see you want to buy. If you are not able to delay gratification, you spend your future today. It's called mortgaging the future. Number five. Are you still with me? In your any season, you should learn to appropriately maintain a healthy work balance. You know, if you're not careful, this is when you travel the world. 
And there are consequences to traveling the world. You leave your wife or your husband at home and your children. And then when you are accomplished, you have won the entire world, you are yet to win the home. So you come back to a home that you are a stranger. I read the story of a guy who was, um, who was a senator. He was a senator in the, in the U.S. Senate, um, um, Congress, Parliament. And he had only one daughter. And because he was not there, his daughter committed suicide. True life story. And he was giving this testimony. He said, if, if I had the opportunity today, he said, I would exchange everything I have achieved to just be able to be with my daughter five minutes. Just another five minutes. I will give everything in exchange for another five minutes. But it's too late. So many of us, in the desire for success and achievement, we leave our families behind. Family is the only thing that you can always come back to. Don't give the life of your family for the life of your business. Many of us are young now. You don't understand what I'm saying. But as you grow older, you will find this temptation. Some fathers are never there. Some moms are never there. There must be a conscious effort to create a balance. There should be a family time. Hallelujah. Tell somebody maintain a healthy balance between work and life. You know, when, <laughs> when work is over, the family will still be there. Family will still be there. And number six is very close to it. In this season, you should build and maintain a strong bond with your spouse and children. In fact, in this season, if you are very careful, your children should become your friends. They should be able to say that, sit down. Let me counsel you. Let me teach you how to do this. Let me teach you how to do this. Because at that time, they actually are more versatile. They are in their learning years. They are strong. They understand many things that you have left 30 years before, 20 years before. But if you don't have the appropriate relationship, you are suffering for things you could learn at home. Hallelujah. Number seven. Okay, many of you will be scared about this. There's, <laughs> there's nothing to be scared about. Plan your will. You know what a will is? A will does not kill. <laughs> the fact that you have a will does not mean you will die. It just means that if you happen to die, your life is in order. Things are in order. So leave a will. In fact, when you write your will, call everybody and say, when I die, this is what I'm giving you. Are you satisfied? If you are not satisfied, tell me now. Call everybody together and say, this one, you are getting this. You, you are getting this. Chike na. Amen. Hallelujah. What we are saying is that Life is very important. And nobody lives forever. We are young today. You won't be young tomorrow. You, you know, when I go to universities today and see people, it looks like, ah, they are children. So one day, I kept saying that, ah, how come that all of our universities are filled with children? And my wife said, sweetheart, when we were in the university, we were like them. By that time, we would feel like we are big boys. Those of you in the university, you feel like you are big. You are small children. <laughs> you know you know you don't know because now you have freedom you decide what to eat you have money in your pocket you can abuse your lecturer and nothing will happen it doesn't mean that you are big you are small children it's your learning years make the most of them learn everything you can learn Set, lay a foundation for a greater life so that you can build a beautiful life on it hallelujah and what I need you to do is to begin to look ahead from today. That's why we're teaching you about any years. Begin to look ahead. Ask yourself, 
when I'm 70, how much money do I want to be worth? Where do I want to live? What kind of relationship do I want to have with my grandchildren? What kind of car do I want to drive at 70? Today is a day to begin to make those plans. When you are 70, it is too late. Hallelujah. I have one prayer point this morning, and that prayer point is, Lord, teach me. Tell somebody, teach me. Tell them, Lord, teach me. Teach me to use wisely all the time that I have. Everybody you know on planet Earth today has 24 hours a day. You can spend it. You can invest it. When you spend time, it is called murder. I mean, it is called suicide. You're just killing yourself. You know, somebody say, I have one hour to kill. No, you can't kill one hour. It's yourself you are killing. Because that one hour, you can read a book. Lord, teach me. Teach me to use wisely the time that I have. I am young now. I am strong now. There are certain things I should be able to do. Help me to focus on those things and achieve them brilliantly. By so doing, laying a strong foundation for the rest of my life. Some of us said we have missed a number of opportunities. Talk to God about those opportunities. Ask God to redeem the time for you. Lord God of heaven, I have wasted a part of my youth. You are the only one who can go back. Redeem time for me. Help me to learn those things I didn't learn them. Help me to learn them fast so that I can become everything that you want me to become. Lord, I'm young. I'm impressionable. Help me not to waste my youth. Help me to make the most of it. I'd like us to begin to pray this morning. I'd like you to close your eyes and begin to just pray to God. Your prayer is, Lord, teach me to use wisely all the time that I have. Teach me to use wisely all the time that I have.